Praise God. Um, shall we turn to our first, our first passage of scripture, that is Romans. Romans chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 1 through to 11. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 1 through to 11. Shall we listen for the word of God? Are you therefore have no excuse? You who pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself. Because you who pass judgment, you do the same things. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you are a mere man, pass judgment on them, and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of, this, of his kindness, tolerance, patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you towards repentance? But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will give to each person according to what he has done. To those who, by persistence in doing good, seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then the Gentile but glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. Amen. And then we look at the gospel reading, Luke chapter 11, verse 42 to 46. Luke eleven forty two to 46. Woe to you Pharisees because you give God a tenth of your mint, rue, and other kinds of garden herbs. But you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. Woe to you Pharisees because you love the most important seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you because you are like unmarked graves, which men walk over without knowing it. One of the experts in the law answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us also. And Jesus replied, And you experts in the law, woe to you, because you load people down with burdens that they can hardly carry, and you yourselves will not lift one finger to help them. This is the word of God. Amen. Shall we bow for prayer? Gracious Lord, we are thankful to you once again. We commit ourselves into your hands that, Lord, you would speak to us. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts. Cause our hearts to be receptive to your word. Cause our minds to be alert to your word. Give us understanding. Grant us the spirit of wisdom. And grant us the spirit of revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we are grateful to God once again. Last week we talked about prayer. And so we are urged to continue to pray. Amen. I discovered in the week something about prayer that was, that, was, that was deep for me. And it talks about the fact in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6. It says that when you pray in secret, God rewards openly. Your father who sees in secret and will see you pray in secret will reward you openly. I didn't know if you pray you were rewarded. I didn't know. And so there is a reward for us as we pray. Amen. Uh, this morning we have a bit of a, an issue with the teachers and the lawyers. Uh, in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why does Jesus single out the teachers 
and lawyers for some rather strong words of rebuke. And uses the word woe. Oh, uh, woe would mean a great sadness or sorrow. Uh, and why did Jesus lament and issue such a stern rebuke? Stern rebuke. Jesus was angry. Absolutely, he was angry with, with the religious leaders because they failed uh, to listen to God's word and they misled the people they were supposed to be guiding in the ways of God. And that's what we read in Romans 2, 1 to 11. You know, they, the very things they were condemning others of, they were practicing them. They were, they were practicing them. The scribes devoted their lives to the study of the law of God and regarded themselves as legal experts. They divided the Ten Commandments into thousands and thousands of tiny rules and regulations. And they were very exacting in their interpretations, demanded so much of the people and had little time for any other thing. They had volumes and volumes and volumes of interpretations of God's word. And in their misguided zeal, they required burdensome rules which made it so difficult to even focus on the more important things in, in religion, such as love of God, the love for God and the love for one another. And so they were misleading the people and pushing them to be more, more Pharisees than, than to be people of God. And Jesus used the example of tithing uh, to show how far they had raised the mark. How far they had missed the mark. God commanded you give a tenth of your, your first uh, fruits of one's labor. And that was an expression of thanksgiving and honor and the providential care of God's people. According to the Old Testament, uh, Leviticus, Deuteronomy will tell you that. The scribes, however, went to the extent that they gave even a thought on little, little things. Tiny plants like herbs and, 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 and mint. <laughs> and they did that with accuracy. Accuracy. So that if you had a backyard garden, you had contumely there. If you had ten of that, you give one, you make sure one should go to somebody else. So they were doing so well. They were doing so well. And I think Jesus was not saying, don't do that. But they were doing all of that. And then they forgot to take care of the needy and the weak, the weak amongst them. So that they, their hearts were not right with God. They were just trying to do something on the outside. Uh, they were filled with pride and contempt of others and put on necessary bedding instead of uh, showing charity and helping the weak and the poor. And why does Jesus also compare them with unmarked graves? Unmarked graves. According to the Old Testament numbers, when you uh, get into contact with the grave, you become ritually unclean. And for about seven days, according to Numbers chapter 19, verse 16. And those who come into contact with the Pharisees and listen to their teaching are like wise defiled by their false doctrine. They infect others with the wrong ideas of God and his demands. And so they were on unmarked graves because people who walk into them without realizing it. Uh, at the time, at time of Jesus, those graves would be marked whitewashed, well painted, so that it was evident. You couldn't walk in them. You avoided them so that you, get, you don't get ritually uh, unclean. But these Pharisees were not whitewashed, so you didn't see them. And you walked into them, and you get infected and defiled because of what they were teaching. You get contaminated. Uh, what some writers will say is spiritual contamination. Spiritual contamination. And the Pharisees must have taken Jesus' accusation as a double, a double insult. They are not only spiritually unclean themselves, but they reject the word of God. And they also contaminate others with the dangerous uh, uh, teachings that they taught at the time. Jesus today continues to attack the attitude of the Pharisees. These remarks are not to be thought of as just applying to the Pharisees. Uh, many of them were good uh, for the Pharisees. Paul was one of them. We have uh, Nicodemus, uh, Gamaliel, also in the book of Acts. These are all Pharisees. Uh, but Jesus is seen here uh, attacking a certain mentality, 
certain mentality. And which could be found amongst us as well. So that if we should not just be looking far away at the Pharisees. If, if there was something to be, to be done, I should be looking to myself because I could be the Pharisee. Because honestly, if we look into ourselves, you would realize that we are no different uh, from, from the Pharisees. Maybe I should be calling you Pharisee A, Pharisee B, Pharisee C, Pharisee D. <laughs> so the mentality is what Jesus has to deal with. You observe the tiniest of regulations. It is good. But why do you bypass the love of God and what really matters? It's just like we here and all our focus will be these flowers. These are beautiful flowers. But church is not all about, about flowers. It's beautiful to have these flowers. When you see them, uh, you, you, you are moved uh, to appreciate what God does. The beauty of God's creation. But that's not all. That's not all. There are more important matters that we must focus on. And so Jesus stresses the centrality of justice and the love of God. And that's the first rule. First, first, first warning that Jesus gives, gives to the Pharisees. Secondly, it was status, sticking. They were trying to find, it was position. It was, it was, it was, it was, they wanted to be in the spotlight all the time status seeking and jesus was critical of the pharisees they would love to have the seats in the front uh when they went to the synagogues they wanted to be seen all the time all the time at jesus's time it, that, that was that was that was it everybody wanted to be somebody if you don't blow the horn nobody will know you are there so everybody was trying to seek and create some kingdom some space for himself or, for, or herself and so it was deeply rooted in their culture and that is what they were trying to do. And so if they were generous in giving, it was just because uh, they wanted to, to, to be seen. It must be seen. It must be seen. They wanted to gain the honor, honor of others. And so Jesus was critical with them and, and thought that they should be doing something else. Jesus had a very different a very different attitude to honor. Very different attitude. He was saying, don't seek it for yourself. Don't seek it for yourself. He was rather encouraging the disciples to seek honor for God. For God. Because to him belongs all the glory and all the honor. And Jesus says that if you live in such a way to bring honor to God, then God honors you. God will honor you. You live in such a way that all you point to is the glory of God and not to yourself. And if you did that, then God will also honor you. God will also honor you. So they loved the spotlight. They loved to be seen all the time. And usually graves, like I've said, were whitewashed. Were whitewashed. Jesus saw the rottenness and the corrupt uh, nature of these persons. And so that was what he was pointing to. So that on the outside, everything would look good. But deep within ourselves, uh, the corruption and the rottenness that could, could, be, found, could be found. So that the, the cleanliness on the outside conceals that which is on the inside, just like graves. Just like graves. And so, brothers and sisters, um, the Lord Jesus wanted these guys to be genuine and not only on the outside and before people um, to present themselves as if they were all good and yet deep within themselves they were not they were not and then lastly the scribes and the ex experts also brought themselves they should have kept quiet when jesus was talking but they said uh -uh, the things you are saying it also concerns us so and so jesus also gave them a woe a warning a warning a warning so we are, in one way or the other, just like the Pharisees and the scribes. And we should be checking ourselves in these wise. It is a natural desire to be honored. It's a desire we all have. I don't know whether you have that too. If you don't check it, you would always want to have it. Because naturally, uh, we have that inclination. 
And how about Jesus would want to point us to honor God and others. In some part of scripture, he says, even consider others better than yourself. It's not that they are better than you, but he says, consider them better than yourselves. And so the highest obligation that I find in all of this is that we will have love as the key. Just as we were singing this morning, love divine, all of us, if you knew what I was going to say. <laughs> That's the highest obligation we all have is love. That's the highest obligation. Love for God and love for one another. Love for one another. We should be asking God for a heart of love. Heart of love. That will help us to love God and love one another. Um, sometimes we also contribute to placing burdens on people. We make it difficult for people who even to be Christians sometimes. By our lifestyle, the things that we do, we do we place a lot of, 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 of weight on them, make it so difficult for them. Uh, in your own small way, you uh, may be in charge of a small community or at the workplace, even the family, the home, the home. And Jesus is speaking to us this morning. Whoa, we should be careful with these things. We should be careful with these things. Religious hypocrisy is what Jesus was also talking about here. Not just seeking status and prestige as religious leaders, but sometimes we are also telling people to do what we are not doing. And we sometimes say, do what I say, but don't do what I do. One of the novels uh, many years ago, Zimorel Sparks or so, had a novel, uh, and that's what the teacher would say. You, know, you tell the kids, you do what uh, I've told you to do, but you don't know what I am doing. Don't look at what I'm doing. Look at what I am doing. Our service to God must come from a desire to please God and not to please man. To please God and not to please man. And so in Romans chapter 2, we call to repentance. That's, a, that's what I find in the whole of Romans 2, 1 to 11. God calls us to, to turn around, to turn around to a life in the spirit. A life that is characterized by love for God and love for one another. A life that focuses on the glory of God rather than myself. Rather than myself. And that, that takes us to, 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 to Martin Luther and the Reformation. And when things were, were going out of hand, God used him to get us to refocus and to, to, to consider the very important things in, in the faith. Uh, scripture, Christ, the grace of God, faith, and the glory of God. These, these were pillars. These were strong points, uh, main points that we find with the reformation with the reformation the essence of god's command is love for god and love for one another uh, the love of god should be able to transform us and give us also a heart of love you don't experience all that god has done for us through jesus christ love divine all love excelling. You encounter this love and it must transform your mind and your heart so that you also reach out to others in love. You're ready to carry the burdens of others. Ready to carry the burdens of others because of the love. May God inflame our hearts with love so that we can pursue the things that are so important uh, to God. Love for him and love for one another. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Uh, as we examine our lives in the light of God's word. How different are we from the scribes and from the Pharisees? 
Are we just advertising ourselves uh, as Christians? So deep within our hearts, we really have a relationship with God. It is easy to, to find the stickers on the bumpers of our cars and hangings in our rooms all over the place. Even you go to the corporate world and you find these hangings all over there. But is it just an, a, a cosmetic kind of, kind of a decorative thing? How connected, how deeply connected are we to this God of love? We are called to repent. Otherwise, we'll experience the wrath of God. And so expose and open up yourself and ask the, the Holy Spirit, the searching light, to go through your life and find out if you can find with yourself some of these things we are talking about. Self-seeking. And all of that. Shall we, shall we genuinely repent of these things and ask God to transform us, renew the spirit of our minds so that we can have the mind of Christ to be more like Jesus Christ who left his glory and his throne above and took upon himself the nature of man became like you, like me so that he could redeem humankind so that he could save us from our sins so that we could be reconciled back unto God all because he loved us How have we demonstrated, yes, indeed, that we love God? How have we demonstrated that? We'll sing it, we'll talk it, but we walk it. Love is thoughtfulness where there is woe. That's uh, one of the things I picked from what uh, Dr. Ayi read to us. We see woe around us, sorrow around us. How have we responded uh, to these? We may be doing something, but can we do better? Is that all that we are able to do? Is that all that God requires of us? Or there is space in there that we could do much, much better than we are doing in the light of Scripture. Let's come back to God in repentance and humility and confess our weaknesses and our shortfalls and ask God to strengthen us and lift us up, lift us up so that we can stand and reflect a lot more his love to this sick and dying world. The greatest of all is love. Lord, fill my heart with love. And so that I can express this love in the way I live to the glory of your name. And we have to pray for our nation, especially with this LGBTQI+. And just as we said this morning, we should be praying that God's word will reach out in this time. The gospel must be heard. The gospel must be heard. It must be preached in all power. You need to shout it from the house tops. The world needs to hear the voice of God in these times. So let us pray that the church will, will awaken uh, to our call. We should, if we are in slumber, sleeping, God should get us up and proclaim the truth, the word of God, for the world to hear. Because the word of God is the answer to all that we see in the world today. So the word of God must be heard. I must be preaching it. You must be preaching it. We must be demonstrating this in our lives. In the corner, wherever we find ourselves, in our homes. We are the epistles. We are the letters written for the world to read. How are we presenting God's word in the world at this time? When we want to get God out of everything, we just want to 
get God out of everything of our schools, of our lives, of our finance. God, we can do without you, is what we're saying. Shall we pray that God will use us, you, God will use me in this time to bring his word closer to this dying world. Wherever we would find ourselves, we will reflect the love of God and be preaching the message of love and salvation through Jesus Christ. I want also to pray for uh, the church, Regent Church, that we will stand out in these times. Lord, cause a crowded church to stand out strong in these times. So that even if all the other churches are, are not pointing people to, to, to Christ, we will be doing that. We will be focused on that which is important. We'll not be doing what the Pharisees were doing, just tithing on, on herbs and mint. We will be doing greater things. Love of God and love for one another. We'll be all over the place and strongly representing the Most High God. We'll be the ambassador for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Pray for those who are not well uh, amongst us, the, the, the elderly, um, older adults who may be going through uh, challenges, um, times of despair and loneliness. We are praying that God's grace will reach out to them. Uh, and all members of our congregation who may be encountering some difficulty we may know of or may not even know of, we are praying that God will reach out to, to every one of us. The elderly, the young and the old, male, female, the children as well. We are praying that our children will grow to love God and, and fear God. Fear God. A number of them are also preparing for examinations and we are praying that God will grant them wisdom. God will help parents because parenting is also getting tougher in these times. Pray for the homes and parents of the Akra Red Church that God will grant us grace as we help to bring up the children in the fear of God. We pray that God will advance his kingdom. Let thy kingdom come, O Lord. Pray that God will expand the kingdom. Let us pray that God will expand the kingdom uh, through us. Just as our vision says, we want to impact the nations, the communities, the workplaces. As regions, let's pray that God will use us to expand his kingdom. An advancement of the kingdom of God. We pray for our individual needs. Uh, you may have something on your heart. Talk it to Jesus. Let us, let us believe that God is able and as we pray in faith, God will answer our prayers and reach out to us at the point of our needs. He will reach out to us. Help will come from Mount Zion. It seems like all is lost, all hope is gone. You don't seem to find a clue to all that is happening, your health challenge, whatever it is. Let's have faith in God and trust Christ, whoever uh, and wherever you are, just call out on Christ. He will hear you. He will answer you. And help will come from Zion, says God's word. Help will come from Mount Zion. May God reach out to us in our need, in our deepest challenges. God reach out to every one of us. And lift us up, O Lord. Lift us up, O Lord. Heal the sick, O God. And grant us your grace, O oh God. We need you this time, Lord. And so whoever cries out to you, Lord, hear us in your mercy. O oh Lord, hear us in your mercy. O oh Lord, hear us as we cry out unto you. You've all that we got. You are our only hope. And so we look up to you, Lord, in times like this. Crisis moments, O oh Lord, you are our shield and strength. So Lord, reach out to us, O oh Lord. And meet our needs. And finally, we want to thank God for our lives. Thank God for the day. Thank God for a new week. 
and as we go through the month we are also committing ourselves into the hands of god that the lord will himself who has brought us this far will take us to the end of the year usually as we move towards the end of the year there are challenges and we hear so many things pray that the lord will preserve our souls that the protection of god will be ours as we move to and fro that the presence of god will go before us and we will be under the shadow of the almighty god he will protect us he will keep us and he will he will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory God, hear our cry and let our cry come unto thee, O Lord. Amen. Shall we thank God for our time together and commit ourselves into his hands as we we leave this temple. We pray that his presence will continue to be with us. And as we go through the day that God will order our steps wherever we have to go, the workplace and our movements to and fro. We'll be guided by the Holy Spirit as we go through this new week. Grace will abound for us. God will take us to the end of October and do us favor and take us to the end of December as he has always done for us. Most gracious Father, we thank you for our time together in fellowship and we bless you for revealing yourself a lot more unto us. Uh, thank you for your love. So amazing, so divine which demands our souls, our lives, and our all. We have brought our offerings, O Lord, unto thee, that you would accept these, sanctify these offerings, and use them to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Shall we share in the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.